Welcome to Circuit Breaker, home of our first match of our the first map of our first match here in the round of 16 in Monday Night Star Mode number 27. In the bottom left corner, your yellow Terran player throwing out the thank you, you two. It is Decoff Caffey. And down in the bottom right hand corner, playing as the glorious pink color, it is Soul. That's Protoss. <clears throat> So this is exciting because Sol has played in a few of these and he's always had to go up against like a really, really strong player in the first round. Because uh, he's not the strongest player the way we see these tournaments. Um, the weaker players play the strong players so that we get some good matches for the finals, etc. Right? So this time he does get to play a player similar in skill level to him in Decop Cappy. And so both of these players are at least going to have a fun match here playing each other before the winner has to go and play Arthur. In the next round. So, <laughs> winner of this gets the opportunity to upset the God King of Starbo himself. Which would be really sweet. I would love to see that. That would be amazing. Um, the only players who have taken down Arthur in Starbo so far, at least in any sort of uh, competitive tournament format, are, I believe, Goody and Franscar. They're the only ones yeah. who have managed to do it. So. Yeah, I don't think BCQD has done that quite yet. No, Beast of Cutie, actually, Franscar took the opportunity away from him. Um, oh, that's week, right. Or two weeks ago, I mean. So we see these players not doing anything too particularly strange yet. Um, normal openers for both of them. Both and, of them getting the lucky scout off in the right direction. Yeah, which is actually kind of crazy because I think scouting north-south is actually the faster route to scout. Ooh, what is Sol doing here? Oh, it's just got walled off, so he doesn't know what to do. I see. He can't get through there, so his probe is just twitching out in the bottom bottom corner there. Well, well, if the probe hasn't moved to the ramp, how does it know that it can't go up? Um, the ah. magic of StarCraft pathing, I suppose. That's it. Well, well, the wall's down, and the probe is gonna not take it. All right. In the meantime, SCV is getting a nice little scout off. A much better scout than the probe got. Much more fortunate than his uh. Protoss counterpart. And we got Orbital, Factory, and Dragoon coming up. We're going to be going into a relatively standard uh, PBT here. No extremely fast expansions from either player. Uh, and no really ridiculous tech paths coming out. Decoff Cappy probably going to go with a little FD. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him move out with a uh, one tank, a few marines, and some mines kind of push. That's something that he's done against me a, a few times, so... Well, the tech lab is on the way, so we'll see what the tech lab decides to research once it's uh, completed. And a singularity charge on the way for a soul. Yep, we'll begin that Dragoon range up, uh, which will be very helpful. It's always good to get that. Actually, did get it after his first Dragoon. Actually, got it after his first two Dragoons, so it's a pretty late singularity charge. Uh, but he will have good Dragoon numbers, at least, at the beginning. But they will not be able to kite against the uh, Marines and tanks coming out for a while. And it looks like it is going to be that Mines push. So mines are on the way here for the Terran player getting the tank, and then we'll see a couple vultures after that first tank, and we'll see a push across the map. Now, you, you got to be careful going up the ramp because the Marines do have a high ground advantage, and with the tank, these dragoons do have to pull back because they do not have range in the near future whatsoever. So they just need to be very careful. Yep, lost a little bit of health on the first dragoon, but nothing too crazy. So they're both in, still in a relatively healthy position here. Now the good thing about Circuit Breaker is that it is a very large map, it's a long way to have to push across, so this sort of mines and tanks push, uh, actually he's continuing to produce tanks, it looks like he might not actually be going for mines too early, uh, or he's just going to go in for a really strong one base push and uh, neglecting the expansion, so this might actually be a, a really aggressive, okay, now he is getting siege mode, let's we'll see really what Sol wants to do here, yeah. Well, there is a Vulture queued up, and it's now on the way, so it looks like it be some really big tank Vulture push. Huge yeah. push. But this, uh, the fact that this push is pretty delayed is going to allow Sol to finish his Dragoon range, and that will be really important. Has these Dragoons at the front to delay as long as possible, but three Dragoons are going to have to just run from this. There's too many tanks. These tanks alone are enough to kill these Dragoons. Observatory, it importantly, is on the way now for Sol, so he will be getting Observers out, will be able to keep himself relatively safe, Against those mines, just has to be extremely careful. So we'll see if he uh, reacts quickly here to this initial push out. And we do have a robotics band in the way, so we'll probably see Ooh, some. No, losing his dragoons. Oh, oh, Soul. The reaction time was not very good, and immediately loses one dragoon and almost loses another one. And uh, Decaf Caffey has a lot of freedom here, and Soul is getting an expansion up. Uh, so D 
Dikov's going to be staying on one base. It's a really aggressive one base play here. Still only working off of the one factory. Looks like he will be expanding now behind this push. Very nice play here from Dikov. Now can Soul hold. He will be getting an Observer out. He's got some Dragoons on the way. Uh, getting another gateway, but it's not finished yet. Um, he's, and... he's trying to Chrono Boost as fast as possible. Five Dragoons versus three tanks with Siege Mode. I'm a full... Oh, and Mike get a nice Mind Drag think, here. Ooh, Mind Drags. Ooh. Oh, the Mind Drags do manage to take out all the Dragoons, though. And one tank does survive. And now three Vultures with Mines. Only one Dragoon. Uh, it's pretty tough position, but if he can macro out and Chrono Boost out enough units, he should be safe here. The fact that he took that tank down, tank count from three to one, is really huge. Also getting a War Prism. He's going to be able to clean this up. He's got to be able to make sure that he keeps his Nexus alive, though. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to. Well, he doesn't cancel it, so it probably will stay alive, but we'll see if it gets any uh, building damage on or not. Yeah, three Dragoons now, Ari will come down here. Can't afford to lose him to the tank, though. Oh, oh going to get the tank right away. Down. Oh, that's a very nice pick off, and now the Vultures are kind of stuck. Like, they're going to try to get some probe kills, but... Oh, immediately surrounded, though. Nice reaction time from Soul. Those pros wanted blood, and that was actually a beautiful hold. That was, yeah, that was really good. That was a really nice job there of Soul pulling those Dragoons right into the tanks, getting the Mind Drags. He saw that the Vultures were going for the offensive Mind Plants and used that against the Terran. He did lose his Dragoons in the process, but getting the, that tank down, tank count down was so critical. One tank is not nearly as scary as three. Uh, tanks are one of those units that the more they have, the more ridiculous they can get, uh, more difficult to engage. We actually have Reavers coming out here now for Soul. Zekop Cappy, um... He does, of course, have the tech lab, so he will be able to produce class. Oh, and he's getting the turrets. And he's getting a lot of turrets. He, he, I'm, I'm assuming he saw the robotics uh, bay with the vultures, so he is preparing adequately. He has several turrets going down. His tanks are decently spread around in his main base and his natural, so I don't think the Reavers can do a whole lot. No, most likely not going to be able to get a whole lot done here. The tank spread in combination with these missile turrets should keep him relatively safe. These two tanks will keep, really, this entire mineral line extremely safe. So, really important scout there. Oh, the vultures don't to get up in the there. Observer. Whoever does get shot down by the missile turret, an unfortunate loss there. Yeah. Now, these uh, Reavers could try to slowly pick off some things. They could get get some Marines, maybe get a Supply Depot, knock down this turret and this Supply Depot. Oh no, coming right in on top of this. This is a Dragoon Reaver drop. That's an interesting one. I'm not sure if I've seen that too often. Yeah, you'll usually see more uh, like a couple Zealots with the War Prism to uh, drop on top of the tanks, potentially. You can uh, see Deco Craft, he's, he's just going to siege up his tanks in a nice position just kind of wave this one out. We only lost a supply to put a missile turret. It's definitely yeah. worth it. And now this uh, this warp prism does not have the health to continue the harassment, and really there's no good opportunity for him to get in though. Though Soul does have an opportunity now. He does have a nice little supply lead and a worker lead, and can start to look into expanding himself. Uh, Twilight Council on the way actually for Soul. Oh yeah, pretty early. I don't want to say early necessarily. Usually you get that as you're getting your third. So Soul so really needs to start thinking about getting an expansion here. Okay, so th there is a Forge on the way. So, I wasn't sure what this Twilight Council was initially for, but seeing the Forge, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be upgrades and uh, probably High Templar. That's what I would imagine. Yeah, well, he's definitely going to want to get the Zealot Leg Speed. Um, the Leg Enhancements are so important in PvT. Really, really, they're pretty important in just about any matchup. <laughs> Having faster Zealots is always good, uh, but especially against the Mecking Terran with the uh, the tanks and uh, getting those Mind Drags. Uh, it's very difficult to Mind Drag with slow Zealots. Now, importantly here, I'm not true. sure if Dikov Cappy knows this, but Missile Turrets no longer form tight walls. He's actually using one in his front wall here, but the Zealots could actually run through that wall now that he's using a Missile Turret, so... When did that change? Or are um, they always like that? Unless it's just in the test map, I'm pretty sure it's in the live version. I'm not sure exactly when it changed, but... I'm pretty sure it's live. Oh no, Kanban, help me out with that. <laughs> Kanban is Ziphius, by the way, everybody, if you didn't know. Oh. So, I like this distant third here from Soul. Soul is expanding as far away as he possibly can from his Terran opponent. Very difficult for a Terran player to push all the way across this middle section of the map. It's very wide open. Uh, very difficult uh, trying to keep units alive when Zealots can easily get on top of them in such situations. Oh, so here's something pretty interesting. The Warp Prism is kind of hanging out outside the natural. So, imagine what's going to happen is the Terran player is eventually going to move out, and the Warp Prism is just going to fly and try to do as much damage as possible while the army is across the map. Because with the same logic that the third is as far away as possible, mech armies are slow, so going back home to defend is detrimental to their attack. Yeah, especially with the kind of composition that uh, Dekop is currently going for. Oh god, I mean, those are good. He barely has- Ooh, no! Oh, no, oh, Soul! No. That was not worth it. That was definitely not worth it. Uh, Dekop well ahead in the resources lost counter right now. 
Uh, yeah, took a, took a few too many shots there. Not sure if he knew how many tanks. As I was saying, Dekoff is going to an extremely tank-heavy composition right now, which is kind of surprising given the size of this map. A large number of speed vultures seems like it would be much more useful at this stage in the game, but Dekoff going with the really, really heavy tank composition. Oh, oh and more Dragoons. Dragoons. Outside the turret. Wow, and this is pretty tough now. Only eight Dragoons on the field. I feel like Dekoff could actually push right now if he wanted to, given how many Dragoons have gone down. So he does have some Vultures that are getting out on the map now. So it looks like he is going to be transitioning a bit more into the Vultures. So got a lot of tanks to begin with, though. Just wanted to stay extremely safe against those Reavers, I guess. Uh, vultures are not very useful against Reavers unless you can uh, trick the Reaver to landing on top of a spider mine. So some nice little uh, cannon and a uh, gateway little wall here at the third. And, oh, these Vultures are going to catch some transferring probes, though. Those, those poor probes, and now he definitely knows about the expansion, because why else are the probes to be up here? And he scans it, now he definitely knows about it. Cannons are going to ward off the vultures for now, but I had imagine the army's going to catch so around. many probes here. Wow, this is that's really tough. That is really evening up oh, the uh, work account. Are able to? Uh oh. They do They're have right. an observer here, so they should be fine. And the combination of the zealots and the cannons will take it down the rest of these vultures. We'll get enough. Nope, didn't quite get this probe. One health. What a lucky little probe. So Sol will continue to pump probes off of three bases, though, so we'll maintain a bit of an econ economic lead, and does have a 17 supply advantage. Um, so relatively even right now, and here comes the big push from Dekoff. Uh, well, it could just be trying to secure an expansion, but we don't see another command center built yet, so this looks like it is going to be a very aggressive push. And we'll have to see if that warp prism does come in and drop that reaver to try to get some kills, as you were mentioning before. So these, uh, actually, there is a command center going down. Where is that command? He's just building it there. Um, Looks like he is trying to expand there. He's just gonna send an SCV down and just make it oh, well, right there. Oh wow! I going all the way for the gas move. here. Extremely bold. <laughs> and oh my god, did he actually see the expansion go down? This is this is pretty strange actually that he's pushing he's pushing through the middle while trying to expand at the six o'clock. Yeah, take play with your mech army since your mech army, army is so slow. You want to you want to always expand behind your attack because your army actually can't really move. You think it can, but it really can't. Yeah, so now, you always want to trying to sneak it out. But actually, De Sol has seen that command center going down. It did just catch the first glimpse of it, so it's on his mini map. He knows about it. And is Dekoff actually trying to push the third here? I think he might be trying to get a nice position in between the third and the natural, which can yeah. be a very difficult thing to to deal oh. with. I would imagine he'd be sending a lot of vultures up once he can secure this middle position, but actually this, this warp prism with the Dragoon and the Reaver is floating above these tanks, and it's going to start dropping them. Like Zelt That's a the nice Dragoon. one. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a lot of damage. A lot of tanks going down at once, and actually, Sol is going to push gonna, this left end. Uh, Sol is going to break the left end, kind of isolating this other chunk, and he could possibly just walk into natural and do a lot of damage. Oh, it's very true. The natural is not very well protected. A lot of Protoss here, but they can't get too close to this, these tanks at the top end here. Oh, this warp prism is going to drop some zealots, and that poor marine trying so Ooh, hard. Oh wow, to that find zealot tracks. drop was extremely, extremely effective. Getting a couple more tanks for his trouble, and a lot of zealots in the production queue now for Soul. Soul reusing these zealots and dropping them again. Really oh, nice done nice. here. And but these dragoons are a little clumped up. They can't engage into these three tanks without the proper spreading. Although the tanks just on stage and they are going to get taken out. So Sol will clean up the push here from Dekov Caffey and has taken a 60 supply advantage and that is it! Dekov Caffey, GG's. Sol takes game number one. Cool game. I really, I, I feel like